All right, so I just did the head of the pitchfork. I used the pencil tool and then modified it with the pen tool. And the issue was that it's symmetrical. I wanted it symmetrical. So I couldn't draw it symmetrically while it was on a tilt. So now that I've made it symmetrical by putting it on vertical, now I can go to the large selection tool and tilt it back to where I want it and kind of find the right placement for it with the hand. Now here's the other thing that's kind of interesting about it. I need this to feel like it lines up visually. So what I'm going to do is actually make a duplicate of it. So Command C, lock it, put a new layer on top, say Edit, Paste in Place, and then I'm going to stretch it out down just like that. And I'm going to hold down Option and I'm going to stretch it out side to side just like that. Okay, now I'm going to use the eraser tool, which we have not used before. And just like the pencil tool, you can click on it and you can set its different um, settings and you can make it pressure sensitive. This is like a brush. So if you use it with a tablet, all I want to do is cut the sides of it. So then I can select the sides of this lengthened, whoops, of this lengthened pitchfork and get rid of them. And then what I want to do is use the eraser tool across the bottom, just cut two slits in it. And then I'm going to use the pen tool, hold down command, find these anchors, and just get rid of the anchors I don't need. of which there are many. Because this is just a simple staff. But I need it to be a staff that's at the right angle. And I need it to not have any kind of hiccups in it. Okay, so, so far so good. Now I can delete it here or erase it underneath the hand, the eraser tool, and then just delete this. Let's see how that looks. Now I don't love how the eraser tool is so arbitrary. It did a nice job there. I'm going to keep that, but down here I'm going to clean it up with the pen tool. Just make it all straight. Get rid of the extra anchors, push in the handles. And this is really refining the logo. Oops. See if I like that slight curve on the bottom. No, in fact, I think I'm going to bring this anchor just down a little bit. Bring in the curves. And I'll keep that curve on the bottom. I like that. Okay. So that is my second logo solution. This one is dynamic right? This one is central symmetrical. But now that it's all complete, let's merge it all into one layer. So I select everything that makes it up. You can hold down shift or command, get all those, copy command C, lock and turn all of these different preparatory layers off, make a new layer on top of everything, say edit, paste in place. Now it's all together on one, Check it out, there's no white shapes. This is what I have to help some of you with. 
There's no white shapes. It's just black cutout shapes, right? And then I can copy that, lock, turn off, just like I did with the bull's head, edit, paste in place. And we can try, especially because it's dynamic, I can try, try squeezing it a little bit. You know, just until it feels right. And see if that's any different. So if I move that over to one side, make it smaller, holding down shift and keeping the proportions versus this. Make it smaller, holding down the shift to keep the proportions. Like, is there much difference? <laughs> no. So I think I'm going to keep the original. But you can always play with messing with it and seeing if it makes a big difference. Okay, so I've got two logo solutions. Now I've got to save this second logo solution. So how do I do that? If you want to get rid of layers, you can drag them to the trash. Uh, the second logo solution, I'm going to unlock it, turn off everything else, and then say File, Save as my... Ah, shoot. <laughs> I just overwrote my old one. So now this is Logo Design 1 EPS. So now I want to turn that off, and I want to save this. Save as design to EPS. Now you only have to create one logo, right? But I just did, I did two. And within those two, I played with all of the different approaches. So I scanned in some of my original sketches, right? So what are the three approaches for pictorial logos? Central symmetrical, dynamic, plays with positive and negative space. I kind of like this one. It used a Minoan Crete kind of bull head, but it's made of different fork shapes around it. Um, and after sketching those, then I came up with these two, and then I had to refine this one to be separate shapes, and I get this one. And then I'm thinking if I do want to add text, I can easily put this into a circle and do kind of an easy emblem-based design. So that's how we got to these designs. And then I want to save this as my AI file. Now that it's got everything in it. Okay, the reason we saved as EPS files is so now we can submit them. Submit our black and white logo. So the way we do that is we open up Photoshop. We don't open a file up in Photoshop, we just open Photoshop. Because remember, vectors have no size. And this will be the first project that we make print ready, because you need to print one of your logos, either your color logo solution or your black and white color logo solution. And then I'm gonna show you how you can actually color within Photoshop on the vector. And in some ways, that's always the best. It's just super simple and clean and keeps it as a vector. And then I'll show you how you can do some coloring within Illustrator as well. So we have a few more things to play with today. Once Photoshop opens. Now here's the problem. If I open up an EPS file in Photoshop, so if I say open with Photoshop, watch what happens. It will immediately say I need to rasterize the EPS format. So what does it mean to raster, rasterize the vector? It means it makes it locked into a pixel grid, which is undoes all of the work we just did, right? So instead, we don't open our vector files in Photoshop. Instead, we open Photoshop on its own, and we open up a new file that's the size we want. So I'm going to say File New, and all of you should do this. And we are going to make an 8 by 10 Come on. An 8 by 10 inch new file. So my first logo is wider than it is tall. So I'm going to make it 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall. And that is, of course, landscape orientation. 
the resolution, we're going to use our standard lab resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch. So we want 8 by 10 at 350 pixels per inch. We want the background color to be white. We want it to be RG color mode, 8 bit, all the defaults. So that's in Photoshop, an 8 by 10, just blank white. Then, just like we've done with all our compositing, I'm going to drag and drop my EPS file into it. And then, and it comes in as a smart layer. Then I'm going to hold down Shift and Option to grow it, knowing that this is what's going to show on the print. And then the black space outside of the white rectangle, the white canvas, that's my black mat. So I'm deciding how should it look within the black mat. Then I hit return to place it. And check it out. It's a smart file. That means it's referring back to the vector. And it will always be perfect resolution for whatever the native format is. So I can shrink it. I can make it larger and it will always be the best resolution possible because I'm keeping it as a vector. So that's one solution. So I'm going to call this save as Carl assign six black logo. And I'm, I have two, so I'm going to say black logo one to the desktop as a PSD file. Right, because it's two things. It's the background and it's my vector. And we'll go back to it to color it. Now let's do another one. I'm going to turn that one off. I'm going to make a new file. File new. This is for a logo that's taller than it is wide. So I make it 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall. Portrait orientation. 350 pixels per inch, all the other defaults, create. Now I drag and drop my next black and white logo in. And I hold down Option and Shift. And then I realize this is the black mat around it. This is how it looks on the printed page. So I might use my arrow keys and bottom weight it a little bit. Let it be a little bit more... Um, more space on the bottom than at the top for this particular design. Dynamic designs require that. I can hit Command T, maybe I shrink it a little bit more. Give it a little bit more space to breathe. And that looks pretty good. So now I save this. Always save with your name and then a description. Simon 6, black logo 2. Save as a PSD because it's got the smart vector in the PSD now, as long as you always have the EPS as well. Okay, now how do I submit these? So if I submit them to PhotoBucket like this, I'd have to submit them as a JPEG, right? So that they'd have the white background behind them. But logos shouldn't have a background. They should be transparent. Here's the problem. What if the background is not white? So I'm going to make a duplicate of the background, Command J. And then I'm going to say Edit Fill. And I'm going to fill the background with gray, 50% gray. And then I see how my black shaped logo looks on gray. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to duplicate that gray background. And I'm going to say Edit Fill. And I'm going to make it on black. How does my black logo look on black? It's actually just slightly there. You can't tell on the projector, but you can tell on the computer screen because the, the vector black is a CMYK black and the Photoshop black is an RGB black and they're slightly different. So it looks kind of cool. It's black on black. But obviously that's not going to work so well. So how can we make it so that our black shape logo like this, when transparent, will show up on any background, even on a dark background? What we're going to do is add a layer style. So let's turn on these three backgrounds, black, gray, and white. I want you to have that in your PSD. And then I want you to double click on your vector. And then I want you to add a stroke to your vector. And you can play with it. I'm going to put it on the outside. I can play with its size. right? 
and you can pretty much turn it into a sticker.